This might be the easiest hard song ever. It's very hard. I mean, it, it's simple. Well, it depends. There's only one thing to know, but, but it's a hard uh, thing. I, I don't know what I'm saying anymore. <laughs> Folks, we reached the last May Sugar Week. Oops, uh, wrong sound effects. Aww. Yeah, that's more like it. That's it. From this point until May 2025, I'll still have Meshuga episodes. I mean, who am I kidding? They have way too many cool songs for us to not discuss them. Anyway, God He Sees in Mirrors. Track number six on the latest album, Immutable. And this song is indeed a special one. And it is so because there's only one rhythmic pattern that spans over the entirety of this piece. Just one, for like 200 bars. I, I mean, sure, Billie Jean also has only one pattern, but it didn't get an episode here. <laughs> Yet. But stay with me. This is a very, very cool and exciting video. So if you've been around my channel for a while, you've probably seen a Meshuga episode or two. And the rhythmic approach they use is pretty similar throughout. Each section has some standard number of bars, 8, 16, 32, or something in that realm, and they write awesome riffs that don't fit nicely into these frames. They squeeze these riffs as many times as possible, deal with the remainder at the end of the section, and repeat. And while this might sound boring, it's everything but. They've been pushing these boundaries as far as they can go with songs like Do Not Look Down or I'm Colossus from last week, where the initial rhythmic pattern bulldozes over more than one section. And even further with Phantoms, where Half of the song is one gigantic pattern. Go check out the video I did about it. I like that video. Anyway, for this song, it's basically the same thing, but they went all in and composed a song that has only one rhythmic pattern that runs throughout the whole thing. Insane. Okay, so the pattern in question looks like this. Four, two, three, 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 three. 4242332 So a total of 46 beats, or 16 notes if you insist. This song is 182 bars long, and this pattern never stops. Let's tackle the math first. So Whoever of you that were bored till now, this will make sure you leave. Please shut the door behind you. If we have 182 bars times 16 subbeats in each bar, that means we have 2,912 subbeats in the whole song, which usually would be the most useless stat to know, but here we are. 2,912 divided into 46 gives us 63.304 blah 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 which means they play this rhythmic pattern 63 freaking times plus another short version of it that ends here and that's it for the track obviously there are other songs that really capitalize on one pattern throughout i mentioned billy jean before and another one is proudest monkey by dave matthews band in that song the time signature is six and the rhythmic pattern is also in six, and that repeats for like nine minutes or something. That's kind of similar to what we have here, but a little different in a way that here, the time signature is four, so we have 16 sixteenth notes in one bar, but the phrase that we're dealing with is 46. So there's a discrepancy between the phrase and the time signature, which makes it very, very cool. Wow, Dave Matthews, Michael Jackson, and Meshuga in one video. <laughs> Anyway, the implementation of this pattern has two cool aspects to point out. One, the obvious one, crossing the song form built on standard sections in 4-4 with rhythmic information that leans on a 46-beat phrase will result in some nasty misalignments between the two, throwing the rhythmic coherence of the track completely off whack. But that's standard Meshuga. And number two is the fact that, yes, the rhythmic information might be the same throughout, but the melodic content and the execution changes according to the song form. So each section will treat the rhythmic information in it differently. Hell, sometimes they just play long notes that don't accent the rhythms at all, yet the counting never stops. Check this out. Quick heads up, this song doesn't really have distinct 
verses, a chorus, bridge, and stuff like that. Or at least I couldn't find them. So the names of the sections that I came up with are pretty arbitrary. So basically, what I'm gonna do in this video is go section by section in this song and show you how each section interacts with that 46 beat pattern because each section is different length and it starts and ends in a different place. So a fair warning, there are a lot of numbers in this episode. So take a deep breath, we're going in. The intro is 16 bars long, which means 256 subbeats. So we can fit five full reps of this 46 beat pattern, plus 26 more beats, which gets us here. Here we hit our first gap, those long notes I talked about earlier. Gap one is two bars long, so 32 subbeats, which means we finish the previous rep and get here. And notice, they hold a long note. They don't even play these figures, but the counting continues. Next, we have section A1, which is eight bars long, so 128 subbeats. So we finish the previous rep, squeeze in two more full ones, and we land here, two subbeats after the beginning. And this is where gap number two is. Gap number two is also two bars, which gets us all the way here. Now this two here is a quick beat, it's only two sixteenths note long. So the next section, A2, let's say, starts like this. So one to one. A2 is eight bars, which means we quickly finish this previous rep, play two more full reps, and we have enough space to squeeze everything till here. This next part, I'll call it B1, is 12 bars long, or more like eight plus four, because this section actually modulates up. Great, we'll finish this rep, play three more, and start another one till, again, two subbeats after here, right in the middle of this group. By the way, all these groups that get quote unquote cut in the middle result in very groovy syncopations when you listen in context. Also notice that after eight bars, we go back down melodically, which is why I said eight plus four. That happens somewhere here during the third rep. Next section, I'll call it riff one because there are no vocals it's eight bars long so we close up this rep play two more full ones and start another one that gets us all the way here to this subbeat stay with me huh? we're not even halfway through section c1 is up next this one is 16 bars long so we have 256 subbeats to fill up we finish up the interrupted rep as usual from before this time we add five full reps and end up right here, two subbeats into a new rep. Also, there are some very cool drum fills here. All right, plowing forward, we get to D1. Eight bars, 128 beats. We'll start by, again, finishing up this almost perfect rep. We add one full rep, and we have enough space to squeeze in another rep till here. Now we get to riff number two, and this is kinda odd, it's 11 bars long, or 10 plus one, y you'll see why. 11 bars times 16 beats gets us to 176 subbeats. We quickly finish this previous rep, add three more, and now we're getting to that extra bar that lands us right here. But here again, notice how they don't play these three, they add that vocal break. But as usual, the counting continues. <sighs> E1 is next, and by the way, I change the letters for the sections when the riffs change under the vocals, and they just change all the time, so uh, yeah, E1. Okay, 16 bars for this one, 256 subbeats, we will finish this lovely rep and add five more, restart another one and land here. Before the guitar solo, I want to share a word from the sponsor of this video. I'm kidding, who's gonna sponsor this mess? The math department for my high school? Go on. <sighs> Yala, the guitar solo. 32 bars for this one, so 512 subbeats to fill up. We of course finished the previous rep, and now we add 10 full reps, plus this much. A cool thing to notice here is that Thomas plays the first 16 bars in halftime, so there's a backbeat about once a week, and he returns to the regular groove on the other 16 bars. <sighs> Whew, this is uh, a lot. If you're still here, comment where you're watching this video from. Are you home? Are you at work? Are you on the train? Are you in class? And note that um, bathroom is a valid answer. All right, 
post solo, we have another short riff, riff number three, for two bars, so 32 sub beats. We just barely finished this rep and we land here. Oh, and now this is exciting. Check this out. We have D2. Finally, we have something familiar happening. But this time it has a different form. It's 13 bars, so 208 sub beats to fill up. We'll start by completing this cycle, which is almost a full one. Add three more and keep on going till we max out here. Two sub beats in. And another two bar gap. Gap number three gets us here. And now we have A3. And here something cool is happening. We get to this version of the riff, which we've heard before. And it's familiar for two reasons. First, we heard this riff before and played with this exact melody or noise choice. But also, the first time we had an A section, it also started in this exact spot, which makes me wonder. Maybe that's why the previous part, D2, was an odd number of bars? Maybe the goal was to realign the return of the main riff with this exact rhythmic spot? Hey, hey. Uh, you get from the future here. Before I got into all these speculations about where this part starts and why and all that, I forgot to add the bar count for A3 itself uh, because I'm an idiot. So uh, here it is. And we end up here. Great, and now I'm just gonna show you how the rest of the song till the end is just an exact repetition of what we had at the beginning. Same as in the beginning, we have another two bar gap here. Another A, so A4. Another B, so B2, that ends the song. I doubt that's a coincidence. Well, there you have it. We got to 63 and we finished the song. This is very impressive. Pulling this kind of thing off is by all means not easy. And who is better to do it than these guys? I'll be uploading the full song in the next few days with all the counting plus an annoying metronome that outlines all of those different rhythms. Hopefully that'll make it easier for you to visualize everything we discussed. So stay tuned. Wow, this was super fun. I'm super happy to come back to these videos. And if you like the stuff that you've seen, give a like, subscribe, share it, or consider joining my Patreon page. The support from you guys really helps me with being able to put the time and effort into these videos. And let me tell you, these take a lot of time to make, so thank you, thank you very, very much. Another big thanks to Joao and Ricky for helping me out with the guitars for this whole month. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the future.